This is pretty amazing. There are 130 people in attendance here today. There are people from all around the United States here today. Uh, there's actually people from India, people from Switzerland, Arizona, Colorado, New York, Virginia. Um, we started this conference in 2008. The first e-learning symposium was in 2008. We didn't imagine that in 2010 we would have a sold out conference. We didn't really imagine that in um, 2010 we would have an e-learning council. Uh, we didn't really imagine that today we'd get to honor one of our attendees with the e-learning council's outstanding achievement award. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, getting started on something is a pretty powerful thing. And they came up with the mission for the e-learning council and that was to advocate the value of training at the highest levels of the organization. Uh, that was to encourage peer-to-peer -peer interaction between the people who create e-learning and to provide resources for all of you who create e-learning. We have a great program today and I'm going to let John Gillis kick it off. Thank you. You also have e-learning. That's what we're going to be focusing on today, right here. This could be simulations, the traditional e-learning, you know, and a lot of other gaming, different areas like that. But also, the next one is performance support, job aids, FAQs, different things that people can access to support their performance. Social collaboration is next. This used to be coaching and mentoring. Now it's getting more into wikis, blogs, communities of practice. We're going to be talking about this somewhat today also, as social media is helping connect these two. The final one is learning resources. These are things that aren't necessarily proprietary to your organization. It might be a book, a white paper, an article. But the idea of the Spectrum Learning Solutions architecture is that when you're looking to impact the strategic business objectives, that you would come up with a solution that uses multiple delivery modalities, e-learning, where we're focused today is one of them. And it's effective. But it also has to understand where it fits in in the spectrum. So when we're talking today, we'll be talking a lot about e-learning social collaboration. How does that fit into the bigger picture so that we can make sure that we're meeting our strategic business objectives? Because if we just talk about this today and don't understand how it fits into the macro big picture, we've lost sight. The final two things on this are our foundation. Without these two things, the rest of it could crumble. You can build it on sand or build it on rock. Administration, no one likes talking about it. But it's critical. Who's signing the people up for courses? How are we going to upload the courses to our LMS? The administration is a critical piece, but we oftentimes don't want to talk about it. Below that, technology. What platform are we using? which content authoring tool, which LMS, which learning content management system, and how are these all playing together and integrating? Much less integrating with our talent management solutions, our performance management solution, our workforce planning solution. So technology is the solution, it's also the integration of the solutions. The idea is that if you can do something and get really good at it, you need help to do it. And here are the four elements of doing it. The first one is grasp the method. You have to have the training. Right? You have to have some base level of knowledge. Someone has to teach you to do whatever you do well. So you're all e-learning people. Who taught you that? Where did you learn this stuff? Right? How did you learn it? Um, repeatable. The, there's a whole bunch of study behind this, a research, but it takes 10,000 hours, you know, according to research, to be good at anything. 10,000 hours. Right? And there I was in college thinking that, hey, I, I majored in biochemistry. I'm an expert. Right? I, I know this stuff. Right? You can't do it in four years. Right? It makes you realize that, yeah, maybe I got specialized in something, but am I really an expert? Probably not. Right? Um, and by the way, John, when I, I did the math on, on, our, on our, as you go through your dissertation, at the whole process, it's about 2,000 hours of work, right, in terms of the total count. So if you think about, you're on your way to become an expert in anything, that adds to it, right? So going back to school, what you do for work, but it's deliberate practice. So it isn't just showing up, right? It's the fact that you're focused on learning something specific and getting really good at it. Right? That's what defines the idea of deliberate practice. Um, requires feedback. We're getting really good feedback here with the hands going up and down, right? And, and this whole idea of social media and collaboration gives us instantaneous feedback. That's a very important part of getting good at anything, right? And the final one, motivation. That's huge, right? If you don't want to do it, you know, why are you doing it? Why are you here? We had this discussion last night at, at, at dinner about, you know, your purpose and your calling. 
well, why are we doing what we do here, right? What um, is out there and available to e-learning is that there are tons of, of little games. Um, and um, a game has that advantage of really becoming an engaging, immersive experience. Um, and obviously, that's only applicable um, to certain types of learning. You're not going to um, say you want to have um, someone simulate a dialogue-based um, conversation, per se, and um, think that that's a game experience. You want them to be engaging in a dialogue conversation, right? All right, so this next one is just a, a quick, I, I used, to, used to use this with my team all the time, and that is along the same lines of doing a little bit of visual work or graphics work up front, the same way you might write, do a little bit of analysis before you start writing sometimes. But the idea is that rather than going straight to iStock or going to your, your, your corporate library and just start saying, okay, I'm doing this course on economics, I need to get in there, I need to get in there fast and start finding economics. Doing a little bit of work with your written storyboard, so whether it's whatever format you have, uh, I'm just going to start with this as sort of a, a default storyboard, but the idea is that you have at least some place if there's narration, narration column, and some place there's a text column. And whether you do media notes or not, um, you know, that's, that's what we're going to do here. But the idea is rather than just going straight to your photo library and start looking for financial signs that look like what you might want to write to, especially if you're handing it off, is you've written the course or you've been given the course, you need to first go through this and start identifying pieces of that course that actually are the main thought of it. So if you want to get away from one, one image per slide that summarizes your entire course, right, start just kind of highlighting a few of them. So if you're the one writing the course, you, you have a little better idea of this, but if you aren't, it can be passed over to you, maybe it's in, in SME or source material. Go through and try to find what you think is the most important part, highlight those, and then pull out one or two words from each section. So you know. Learner, the thing that you want to know is at hand. For in addition to having all of that other stuff, we actually have the Office 2000 manual. This 450 page manual contains that thing that you want to do in it. And using, once again, using the finest in linear page turner technology, I will take all 450 pages and chunk them in 30 word increments providing you with over three hours of entertaining e-learning. I think this looks like cognitive overload. Oh, she's not engaged. I've got it, I've got it. Okay, so it's a little dry, but we need to get some, we need to get some interactions. Aha, I had a custom e-learning module specifically created for this emergency. Behold, the Captain Smead Mark II. <laughs> <laughs> me on the base with the into a webinar. And here's why. You're going to learn visually and auditorily and <coughs> touching kinesthetically and so forth. I can't describe the cover of this book using words. I could, but it would take me a long time, right? If I have a webinar going, I can launch a webinar, whether it's Adobe Connect or WebEx or live meetings, in a second. All it is is clicking on Meet Now, and suddenly I've got a picture. Okay, so. Think about converting those teleconferences into audio conferences. You're going to need the visual. And you, if you've got the tool and you're not using it, it's sitting right there for you. Uh, 